Hi everyone and welcome to the Mesa Public Schools Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event and have some really fantastic schools here with us tonight. My name is Karis and I will be serving as your facilitator. And so before we get started, I have just a couple housekeeping items. The first one you've probably already noticed, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can, however, use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, and they are also all being recorded. And so I would encourage you after the event to check out all of those recordings at strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. That wraps things up for my announcements. And so I will go ahead and turn it over to our first institution, which will be the University of Vermont. Hi, everybody. My name is Jesus Ramirez, Regional Associate Director for the Office of Admissions at the University of Vermont. Welcome and have a good evening. Um, the University of Vermont, it's a public research institution with about 10,000 undergraduate students. We're located in Burlington, Vermont, and we like to describe our academics as an ecosystem where all the different parts of the university, the city of Burlington, and the surroundings come together in building a meaningful college experience. So from this picture, you're able to see um, part of our campus overseeing the city of Burlington, and then we're surrounded by the beautiful green mountains of Vermont and Lake Champlain. In terms of academics, we have a lot of different majors, over 100 different programs, organized by our seven different colleges and schools. So as you can see, we have everything from business, engineering, nursing, education, the arts, um, among others. Every single program is direct entry. So if you know what program you wanna study, you can go, go right into that program. Otherwise, there's quite a few different options. Some unique programs at UVM include our animal sciences. For those of you who wanna go into vet school, you can take advantage of our cooperative for real education and agricultural management. We have a bachelor's, master's, and a PhD in food systems. So we take our food very seriously. And we're also very passionate about environmental studies. That is a program that you can study at three out of seven colleges at UVM. In addition, we also have a medical school and a hospital right on campus, which provides a lot of exposure for students interested in the health and natural sciences. Fun fact, UVM is the fifth oldest university in New England, but if you've been to campus or browse through our website, you see that we have a lot of new facilities. Our brand new, um, our newest facility is our STEM complex, uh, which is a great addition, not only for our College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, but our entire student population. We're in the process of building a brand new athletic facility, uh, which we're really excited about. And our wellness environment residence hall is also pretty recent. As a media research institution, our students like that at UVM, they're able to find all the resources associated with a large public research institution, but also a small sense of community. So they feel that the size of UVM is sort of a nice, comfortable size. And our students also like the fact that at UVM, they're able to find open and urban spaces. We're located in the city of Burlington, which is the largest city in the state of Vermont, but we're surrounded by a lot of great natural resources, which are great for research and recreational activities. As a Division I school, there's many exciting things happening at UVM, athletics being one of them. We have 18 varsity sports for those of you who want to represent the catamounts in the court or in the field. We also have club sports, intramurals, um, over 200 different clubs and organizations. We also have a Greek system if you're wanting to be part of a fraternity and sorority, and about 8% of our students are involved in the Greek system. But at the end of the day, what really excites our students is academics. Every single student has an academic advisor, which will ensure a four-year pathway to success. And we have about 35 accelerated master's programs for those of you who want to get your bachelor's and master's within five years. UVM is a residential campus, and you'll be living on campus for at least two years. Every single first-year student lives in a learning community. So these learning communities match your interests, whether it's inside the classroom, outside the classroom with your living environment. Um, these learning communities have different themes um, and these themes include arts and creativity, outdoor experience and wellness environment among others. As a student, you rank these learning communities one through eight 
one being your top choice, and you're typically placed on either your first or second option. As you're getting ready for the application process, at UVM, you can submit your application through the Common App or My Coalition. We are test optional for the next two academic years. Um, so if you were able to take your tests, you feel very proud of them. Um, you feel that's a strong representation of your academic ability, your, your potential as a college student, go ahead and send them. Otherwise, you can go, um, if not, you can go um, test optional. The deadline for early action is November 1st and the deadline for regular decisions, January 15th. Whether you apply early action or regular decision, you'll be automatically considered for a merit scholarship. These merit scholarships range anywhere from 8,000 up to 20,000 and are, are based on academics. So the stronger the GPA, the better scholarship you could be eligible for. We also encourage all families to complete the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid to be eligible for need-based financial aid. And overall, about 88% of our students receive some sort of financial assistance, whether it's merit, need, or combination of both. To conclude my presentation, I wanna highlight the fact that at UVM, over 70% of our students come from out of state. And they come to Vermont because they wanna take advantage of the academic opportunities available at UVM. They come because they love the outdoor experiences available in Burlington and its surroundings. But they also come to UVM because they're environmentally conscious. Whether that's something they wanna study or just wanna be exposed to, our students wanna use their academics to make a more sustainable world. So if any of these attributes uh, reflect on what you're looking for a college experience, check out the University of Vermont. Thanks. All right, I am the next presenter, the University of Delaware. So let me share my screen and we will get started. Again, thank you for being here. And I, I just wanna take these six minutes and to give you some um, great information about the University of Delaware here. And if you see this QR code at the first or the end of my slideshow presentation, feel free to put your cell phone, mobile device up there and you can get on our inquiry list more quickly than when we get your information later on if you've opted in for communications. All right, we have the power place at the University of Delaware here. And a lot of times students on the West Coast, they can't usually figure out specifically in their head, what does Delaware look like? and where are they located how do i get there and right here as you can see we're really strategically and conveniently located right in between four major east coast cities philadelphia is going to be the closest international airport that we are closest to we're in that blue dot right uh below wilmington delaware we're a 45 minute drive from philadelphia uh less than two hours from new york city 90 minutes by amtrak from washington dc and about 60 minutes from train from baltimore and we're right off the major interstate i-95 that goes all the way from maine down to florida so we what we are is very convenient to get to close to the atlantic ocean and we are the flagship tier one research school in the state of delaware that has twenty five thousand total students but out of that population the breakdown is 75 percent or just under eighteen thousand students are undergraduates so as you can see uh, a large amount of our resources the access to professors internships uh, really anything is really undergraduate friendly. One last note on our population is 70% of our total students are not from the state of Delaware. Predominantly, our students are coming from Chicago base east, but we have a very, very strong presence from the west coast, really everything west of the Rockies. We are growing that population every year, and I've worked for eight years at the University of Delaware, and it's been exciting to see that population grow. One thing that's important for any student that's considering their four-year experiences, what is there to do not only on campus, but off campus? One thing that is unique, uh, specifically to Delaware, and I know a few other places have this too, but so unique's not the best word, but one thing that we're proud of, I should say, is we have a really cool main street that intersects our large quad called the Green. And, you know, going off campus, there's over 80 different unique boutiques, restaurants, and shops for our students to hang out, spread out, and really relax and enjoy the culture of New York, Delaware, because a lot of these restaurants and shops are unique to our city. It really gives a quintessential college town. And like I mentioned, you don't need a car to go off campus. You're literally right there, 10 minutes from the first year village. 
Uh, it's a very flat bike friendly campus too. So it's very easy to get off campus at the University of Delaware, which is nice, but we also have a lot of great on-campus amenities too. Like any other major flagship institution, we have a lot of majors and minors to, to actually focus on and consider. Uh, you can be directly made, admitted into any of our majors, but 20% of our students come in each year as university study students. And what that means is they have multiple interests and they wanna just come and go through our liberal arts curriculum. And it could be after one semester, or it could be after four semesters near the end of their sophomore year where our advisors are working with these students to find what college is gonna be for them. We have eight different colleges at the University of Delaware here where you unique blend of the humanities and sciences. Some of our more competitive majors that I will really would recommend them being on their first choice of the application is nursing, chemical and biomedical engineering, and also kinesiology and sports health. We have a, a very top rated physical therapy school at the University of Delaware. So between those engineering and health science programs, I definitely feel that we don't see a lot of internal transfers into those programs, but we do have really great programs in psychology, education, business. Our newest college is the Biden College of Public Policy. So a great place to study political science, international relations, and to really get involved with the community as well. We also have a hundred different minors to add as well. And most of our students will add a customized academic experience with either a double major or add multiple minors. The honors program is our largest living learning community where students within the honors college has access to extra career and academic advising. Uh, they live together in their first year village in Reading Hall, uh, and they have classes that won't exceed 25 students. The good news this year is we've waived the essay requirement for the Honors College. You just have to indicate on the application you are interested. One thing I'll say about study abroad is we were the very first college in the university to do this in 1923. We've been doing this for nearly 100 years, and we, have, we go to over 100, we have 100 programs in over 40 different countries, and that number continues to grow with the interests of our students. We can do the traditional fall, spring, or summer travel abroad experience, or a lot of our students are really interested in our winter session travel abroad experience that happens in between our fall and spring semesters in January. For applying to the University of Delaware, common application or coalition, I would say 92% prefer the common application, but whatever you prefer is most important. You just have to complete the required essay on the actual platform. One thing that is different is we do require the SRAR, which is the self-reported academic record. You can follow up with me and I'll give you some links to some YouTube videos on how to do that. It really is easy. It's not hard at all. And we do, we are test optional for the next two years for all students, both for admission and for merit-based scholarship. And we just need a counselor letter recommendation or the school report. As I wrap up here, I want to highlight the number one ranked high school youth entrepreneurship competition in the United States, the Diamond Challenge. This is open for all students around the world uh, who have an interest in bringing value in this world through either a business innovation concept or social innovation. You don't have to consider the University of Delaware as a college location to do the Diamond Challenge. And you can do it in all four years, ninth through 12th grade. And here's my information. I will also put some uh, important links in the chat as well but I am gonna sign off and hand it over to the next presenter. Thank you. Thanks so much. As a reminder, if you all have any questions, I would encourage you to go ahead and drop those into the Q&A. We will get to them as we can, but I will turn it over to our next institution, which will be Duquesne University. Right. Hi, everybody. Having some technical difficulties. All right, here we go. Can everyone see that? Is that working? Excellent. I'm going to assume it is. All right. My name is Maggie. I'm an admissions counselor at Duquesne University. Um, we are located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I'm going to take you through three reasons that our students choose Duquesne. So the first is the Spirit of Duquesne. We were founded by the Spiritan Ministry. It's a Catholic ministry um, in 1878. So we are the only Spiritan university in the world. And what that really means to us is that we walk um, with our, the people we serve. That's really our mission at Duquesne. Um, and you'll find that in our professors, our students, anywhere you are in the world, um, the Spirit of Duquesne is alive and well. 
Um, our size, we're about 9,500 total enrollment with about 6,000 undergraduate students. We have a 14 to one student to faculty ratio with the average class size sitting closer to 25, um, especially with COVID and everything. Um, but what that really means is that you're gonna get to know your faculty, you're gonna get to know your professors, um, they will know you. So there's a lot of opportunity for like research outside of class, things like that. Um, you'll get to know your classmates, but you won't see the same bite faces all over the place. Um, there's a good ratio there where you'll get to know a lot of diverse people from all over the world, from all over, all over the country. Um, but it is still like that small family feel, but you're also in the heart of Pittsburgh. Um, so we are right downtown. We're about a 10 minute walk from what you see here. So that's Point Park in downtown Pittsburgh right there. But we have our enclosed Park Lake campus. It's about 50 acres of private property. Um, our students are, feel very safe there. Um, no one's there that isn't supposed to be. No one wants to go up our giant hills, <laughs> um, up to the bluff, as we like to call it. Um, we are right down the street from um, lots of internship opportunities right in the heart of Pittsburgh, as well as a lot of dining, shopping. There are theaters. Um, if you're any Steelers fans out here, you're not too far from Heinz Field, as well as PNC Park for the Pirates. And we are right next door to PPG Paints Arena, where there are concerts. Um, it's the home of the Pens. So if you're a hockey fan, you can also go see a hockey game with the student rush tickets right next door. All right, so our academics. Uh, we have nine schools of study with a 10th coming soon. Our uh, College of Osteopathic Medicine is set to open in 2024. We have around 85 undergraduate majors right now. That uh, kind of ebbs and flows with student interest. So we just added a public health right before the pandemic. So it was kind of ironically timed, but well-timed. Uh, we have a lot of direct entry programs, specifically in our health science programs, such as occupational therapy and the physician assistant programs. So it's like a five-year program. When you apply as a senior, you're in for those five years. You don't have to reapply by your third year or anything like that. Uh, once you're in, you're in, and you can graduate in five years with a master's or for the pharmacy program, it's six years for your PharmD. So our students really like that assurance. Um, you don't have to worry about trying to reapply in your third year and then end up not having a seat. Um, your seat is guaranteed when you apply your senior year as, if you are accepted. Um, all of our programs have a lot of hands-on experiential learning. So you're out in the community uh, doing the things that you're learning in the classroom. So for our pharmacy program, you might be doing a, we had a COVID clinic in the Hill District right next door. Um, our psychology program does group therapy in the Hill as well. Um, our education students are out student teaching as early as their freshman year. So it's a lot of hands-on experience um, as soon as possible. So you can really start to see what a career in that field might feel like for you. Um, and like I said, we're always adding new academic programs and very open to what students are interested in. Um, thus, our School of Osteopathic Medicine coming soon. We have uh, three specific opportunities to study abroad. We have the typical semester long program, two of those being um, Duquesne faculty and staff, such as our Duquesne campus in Rome and our center in Dublin. So that is Duquesne faculty, Duquesne staff, um, you will study at the University College Dublin if you choose to go to Dublin, but the Rome campus is all Duquesne students, all Duquesne faculty. Um, so that's really easy to transfer everything over. If you wanna study abroad somewhere else, you just work with your um, academic advisor as well as the study abroad office, and they will work with you and make whatever, whatever you want work. Uh, we also offer a May master. So those are more program specific. For example, our forensic science program went to England and Scotland and they studied Jack the Ripper and they went to Scotland Yard and learned about that. Um, our pharmacy students went to Japan and worked in a Japanese pharmacy while our business students go to China and learn about business in China and what that looks like. So there are a lot of opportunities there, um, more program specific, but it's nice because it fits into your schedule without taking away from your spring semester or your fall semester. We also have spring breakaway courses. So you will take a course in your spring semester and then for the week of spring break, you will go to that place. So our Eng um, an English course went to London to study journalism there. Um, we have an enjoyment of Irish music course and you can go to Ireland for the week and go enjoy the Irish music that you're learning about. So 
So a lot of cool programs. And again, anywhere you want to go in the world, just work with the study abroad office and they will make it work for you. We have over 250 student organizations that ranges anywhere from squirrel watching club to chess club to American chemist society. Um, we have Greek life, all those fun things. Um, if there isn't something that you like there, it only takes 10 students and a faculty member to start an organization. But again, there is a lot to choose from, whether it be athletic, spiritual, uh, we have multicultural organizations like the International Student Organization, uh, as well as social, political, and philanthropic organizations. So our application process, we have early action one deadline coming up pretty soon, November 1st. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely get those applications in soon. Uh, we accept the Common App Coalition app, and we also have our Duquesne Future Focused app. You can go to duke.edu slash apply, and that's where that lives. Uh, we also have early action two, December 1st. Our physician assistant applications are all due by December 1st. We won't read them until then. So you still have time if that's what you're interested in. Uh, that's one of our most competitive programs. It's 40 seats. We got about 700 applicants last year. So if you are interested, definitely get those applications in as soon as possible. And regular decision is January 15th. We are still test optional this year and we do a holistic application review. So it will be me reading all of your applications, reading all of your essays, recommendation letters, things like that. Um, so really getting to know the whole person rather than just like the test score or GPA. All right, and there's my information there. So if you have any questions or anything like that, anything you wanna know more about, um, feel free to take a screenshot of that. And I am here to help with anything and everything. All right, thank you all so much. As a reminder, if you all have any questions, I would encourage you to put those in the Q&A and then our panelists will get to them as we can. Um, but we have just a couple more schools tonight um, with the next one being Salve Regina University. Awesome, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So just a quick heads up before I go ahead and get into it. I am actually not the rep for the Arizona area. I know it says Stephanie's name. My name is Nina. Um, I'm just covering for Stephanie tonight. I will have all of her contact information down at the bottom as soon as the presentation's over, um, but she is the go-to rep for the area and she'll be the one that you wanna reach out to. So Salve Regina was founded by the Sisters of Mercy in 1947. We have five critical concerns. So the Sisters of Mercy were super progressive when they started. That is global warming, immigration, nonviolence, anti-racism, and women. So as you can see, we're definitely advanced in our thinking. These are the critical concerns that guide our mission moving forward. And they're really the core of everything that we do at Salve, and they kind of guide us through everything that we do here on campus. We are 2,100 undergraduate students. 85% of our student body does come from out of state. So we actually don't have a lot of Rhode Islanders. We're about 20 to 30 minutes from Providence and about an hour and 15 minutes from Boston. So those are some really popular um, internship locations and our students come from over 50 states and 21 different nations. So Newport is a gorgeous seaside town. You'll see right here that this is our campus right along the water. So our, our students do have um, nice ocean views while they're in class. Um, we're about five minutes from downtown Newport. Students have access to all of the shopping, the restaurants. Um, Newport always has some kind of festival going on. So it really is a beautiful historic place to go to college. We're also only a few hours from New York City as well. So a lot of different options in terms of places to go for the weekend, places to go for the afternoon, um, and ways to get involved there. Because we are a um, liberal arts university, we have 46 different majors. So they are all listed on the screen there. Um, but the nice thing about Salve is that there's a lot of room in your schedule to mix and match. So students um, have a lot of freedom in terms of what they wanna major in and what they might wanna minor in. We also have a lot of double major options and then we have 14 combined master's degree programs. So for students who wanna stay at Salve for a fifth year and get that master's degree, that is definitely um, an option. All of the majors that you see here and on screen are also available as a minor. So some of our programs are only available as a minor. That's what you'll be seeing on screen right now. And then we also do have six pre-professional programs. So that is dental, engineering, law, medical, pharmacy, and veterinary. 
So Salve classes are pretty small. Our classes are typically 19 to 20 students and they are always capped at 35. For some of the STEM majors, so the science majors, those classes are gonna be even smaller. So typically nine to 10 students per class. And what Salve really focuses on is hands-on learning. So given our gorgeous seaside area, um, a lot of our bio students will get out, they can study the ecosystem. Our focus is really um, hands-on and collaborative learning. So we try not to lecture at students. All of our classes are very collaborative, discussion-based, they're super interactive. Um, so students are really getting a feel for their field um, right from the get-go, right from their freshman year. Our nursing students also start their clinical sophomore year. That is a direct admit program. It's one of our most popular programs on campus. Um, and our teaching students also start their student teaching um, their sophomore year as well. So like I said, very hands-on learning. Your professors will definitely know you by name. Um, and then you have an academic advisor, a career advisor, and our undecided majors also have an exploratory advisor. So your exploratory advisor is working with you your first two years to make sure that you're taking classes and things that you're interested in. They're really helping you to narrow down um, your major, what you're interested in, and then declare your major at the end of your sophomore year. So you have a lot of people in your corner at Salve, a lot of support. Um, your professors also mentor you, they help you with research opportunities, and we also partner with other universities in the Rhode Island area um, in terms of research labs. So students who are doing a research project that maybe want to use the facilities, for example, at the University of Rhode Island, are welcome to do so. Um, so though we are a small campus, we definitely have um, a lot of the big campus resources. So what we always encourage our students to do is to get involved outside of the classroom as well. So Salve has over 80 clubs and 20 varsity division three athletics. So pretty much every major on campus has a club associated with it. And then every interest under the sun, there's some kind of club to go along with it. We also tell our students, if you cannot find something that you're interested in, it only takes five students on campus to start a club. So we always encourage students to rally your friends um, and definitely start something that you might be interested in. We also encourage our students to get involved in downtown Newport. So a lot of students will have part-time jobs in downtown Newport. Um, we always encourage volunteering opportunities. We really want to get to know the, our students to get to know the city that they live in. Um, and we pride ourselves on, on really giving back to the city that we call home. So a lot to do um, and a lot of ways to get involved. Salve also has 200 different study abroad opportunities. So we have 200 different study abroad programs in 45 different countries. So pretty much anywhere on the map that you can think of um, that you might be interested in going, we've got it. Um, our programs range from semester long programs to week long programs, summer programs, spring break programs. We've kind of got a little bit of a blend of everything. And those programs vary in their structure. So some programs you might be with the host family, some programs are gonna be dorm style. It really is up to you. Um, and depends what you're looking to get out of it. A lot of our students will study somewhere that coincides with their major. So for example, our music students um, tend to study in Vienna. They'll study all of the composers. Bio students will go to New Zealand, um, study the ecosystem. So there's a lot of uh, different opportunities there. In terms of our application deadlines, our first application deadline that's coming up is November 1st. So that's early action and early decision. Um, reminder to all students that early decision is binding um, and our nursing applicants are required to apply by November 1st. That is also a direct admit program. January 5th is our second deadline and then February 1st is our regular decision deadline. We always tell students just to apply whenever they feel ready. We don't evaluate the applications any differently based off of the deadline, um, really up to the student and when they'd like to hear a response by, but we are telling students that the students who apply by November 1st will typically hear a response around the holidays um, and January 5th at the latest. So our application requirements are pretty straightforward for what you're seeing for schools who are on the Common App. So we need those two letters of recommendation, um, we need your essay, and then we are test optional across all majors. So we started that way when COVID hit and it looks like we will be keeping it that way um, for the foreseeable future. You'll also see on my screen, some of the average GPAs and the average test scores. So our nursing program is our most competitive program on campus. You'll see that those scores are just a little bit higher, um, but that's really the middle 50%. Again, we are SAT, ACT optional, but students who do choose to submit their scores, um, we will evaluate them. So up to the student on what they'd like to do there. 
in terms of scholarship and cost, our sticker price is 60 grand, um, but it's pretty rare that students will pay that. So 99% of our families receive some form of financial assistance um, and students are automatically considered for merit scholarships when they apply. So those scholarships range from $10,000 to $25,000. There's no separate application that you have to do for that. And you will know um, your merit package when you get your acceptance letter. So get a little bit of peace of mind there. We do have a couple additional scholarships that students can apply for. They're all listed right on our website. Um, those have separate applications, but merit scholarships here you're automatically considered for, which is really nice. We obviously also always encourage our students to come visit our beautiful, beautiful campus. We have a couple of one of our fall open house dates just passed, but we have one more fall open house date coming up on November 7th. Um, our tours are back on as normal. And then we, we will have um, some admitted student events this spring um, and this winter as well. So we don't have any dates set for that, but definitely keep an eye out. I will be dropping the link um, on how you can schedule a tour right in the chat box as soon as this presentation is over. Um, but that's a really great way to you know, get a feel for campus um, and meet some of our student ambassadors and, and talk to students who attend Salve. And then just to wrap it up, this is all of Stephanie's information. She is a Salve alum, so she's an awesome contact to talk to um, and can speak from a lot of personal experience. And then I'll drop her contact information in the chat as well. But thank you so much for coming out. That is all from me. Perfect, thank you. Well, we've got one more institution to present for us tonight, and that is going to be Johnson and Wales University. Hello, everyone. Well, I'm happy to tell you that we're staying um, pretty much almost in the same neighborhood. Let me share my screen here. And let's see. Come on. There we go. All right. Can everyone see that? I haven't heard that you can't, so we're gonna go with that. So good evening, everyone. My name is Pat and I'm with Johnson and Wales University. And we actually have two campuses. So since you have already become familiar a bit with that area, uh, let me just mention that our two campuses are um, set up. The original one is in Providence, Rhode Island, and we actually have two campuses there. So just to kind of orient you, that's um, just um, about 45 minutes from Newport. So we're also pretty much right on the water as well. We have uh, over 80 majors. Um, the university has a uh, approach that is, I think, very unique in that we allow students to take classes in their major in the very first semester. So you're not going to sit through general education courses for two years at Johnson & Wales. Uh, we also have lab-based learning experiences, and I'll tell you more about that in just a few minutes and experiential education, where we uh, do have internships that are required as well. So the two campuses that we have, Providence was actually started in 1914 by two women, I always like to mention that, and business was one of our first majors. We are very well known for culinary arts and then also the Charlotte campus was opened about 30 years ago, and that is located in North Carolina. So for those of you not familiar with the areas, so um, these are the two locations, Providence in the Northeast and Charlotte down in the Southeast. These are the majors and the different colleges. And uh, I'm just going to mention a couple really quick. Um, in addition to culinary arts and hospitality, which has always been, like I said, one of our largest majors, we've really expanded that now. And um, we also have moved into um, sports entertainment and event management. So those areas 
focus still in hospitality. We also have public health and the area that also is becoming really popular is a master's program, physician's assistant or PA. So students that study biology and ultimately want to go into the medical profession, um, taking the path of the PA is an excellent way. And as, as many of you know, I'm sure that you know, nursing programs are, are very waitlisted. Um, RPA program, though it is competitive, um, it is guaranteed enrollment if you do a biology program for your undergrad. The College of Food Innovation and Technology has uh, really expanded to include all of these majors. And we've really um, found that um, the way that we approach it is through learning labs in both campuses. And the students in the very first year learn um, and they apply their learning. In the lab environment, it's a natural flow to then do an internship. So students actually live on campus the first two years. And we have a, with the internships, I'm gonna drop down to this slide, um, a really successful program model, over 1500 different internship sites all over the US. And about 90% of those internships are paid. And the benefit to you is that you get a chance to really try out what it's like to work in that profession. You earn, you earn job experience in working in the real world during the summertime. And then when you graduate, you have work experience, college credit, and about 71% of our students receive job offers just from where they did their internship. So it's a really beneficial way to approach. We're a division three athletic program. So we have most athletics. I should show you quickly the variety that we have. Uh, we also have an excellent equestrian program. So if you love horses and you're thinking maybe about being a veterinarian or you want to be involved in a riding program, you can compete and the equestrian program, as well as these other major sports. The admissions process, you know, we have always been test optional. And now uh, it can either be through the Common App, Johnson & Wales application, there's no fee. And we are looking um, just for your transcripts. And then uh, we also have a deadline as well for early action of November 1. And to conclude, we have um, an average GPA of 3.2 and merit scholarships are anywhere from 14 to $20,000 as well. And to apply, here is the website. So uh, I'd just like to leave you with this closing thought. We have 10,000 students, very small class sizes and to locations. Thank you very much. Well, that wraps up our presentations from all of our institutions. I mean, I just wanna thank you all again for being here with us tonight. A few quick things as we close out. The first is just a big thank you um, for being here at the virtual college fair. The second is that when you close this window, there will be a link to a quick five question survey. And so we would appreciate really any feedback that you can provide us about your experience with the college fair. Like I said, this session, as well as all of the other sessions have also been recorded. And so I would encourage you to go online and check those out at strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. Thanks so much and enjoy the rest of your night. Bye-bye.